This evening, I want to talk to you about uh, serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. I thought about it. I've uh, been thinking about it for a while, and I and I thought about it. And I thought, you know what? Um, when Pastor asked me to speak on a Wednesday night, um, uh, Wednesday night crowd probably doesn't need the message, but some some maybe do. Some maybe just need the encouragement. But we all need to be faithful in our service for the Lord. And th- today, in today's times, it seems like more and more churches. Uh, it's harder to get people to serve in different areas, hard to get people to serve as deacons, hard to get people to do anything in, in, in churches, uh, because, and I think it's because we get too busy with life, with work, with kids, with everything else. And, uh, and um, so I, I think it'd be a good encouragement for all of us. And so if you have your Bibles, I'd encourage you to turn to uh, Psalms 100. Psalms 100. Um, And before we get, get uh, going, uh, read that, uh, the scriptures, <clears throat> excuse me, I want to read uh, the song, A Servant's Heart, um, by Ron Hamilton. And many of you, this is a familiar, familiar song to our church, but I want you to listen to the words, and I would encourage you uh, maybe to make this a prayer of yours. So it says, make me a servant like you, dear Lord, living for others each day, humble and weak, helping the weak humble and meek, helping the weak, loving in all that I say. Make me a witness like you, dear Lord, showing the love of the cross, sharing your word till all have heard, serving whatever the cost. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart. Here's my life. Take every part. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart. Help me draw so close to you that your love comes shining through. Give me, Lord, a servant's heart. And I would, I would hope that that is your, your prayer this evening. It's my prayer uh, to serve the Lord with my heart and that he'll continue to give me a servant's heart. In Psalm chapter 100, 100 and, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 5, the whole, the whole chapter there. It says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, I do thank you for this evening, Lord. I thank you for the opportunity to speak. Lord, I pray that you would speak through me. Lord, I pray that the message would be clear, and Lord, that you would work in hearts. So we ask that you would bless this time. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you look at those verses there that I just read, in verse 1 it says, make a joyful noise. In verse 2 it says, serve the Lord. Um, and how are we to serve him? We're to serve him with gladness. Um, it, uh, it goes on and, and says, uh, um, so we're to serve him with gladness. Um, why do we serve the Lord? Because we love him. First uh, John 4.19 tells us that. We love him be- because he first loved us. So we should serve him uh, because we love him. We should serve, serve him according to verse number five there because he's good. His mercy is everlasting. His truth is endureth to all generations, in other words, forever. So, so we should have a desire to serve our Lord. We should love him. We should have a desire to serve him. I, I, I thought about some things, and I'm, I'm going to read off many things here, but um, uh, ways that, what are some ways that you and I can serve the Lord? Some of, the, some of them are, are very simple. Some of them are a little bit more, but, but uh, just to remind us of some things, and there's many more than what I wrote down, but um, just a few of them. We can serve the Lord uh, in church maintenance. You know, that's big on me because I'm an electrician, so I think of maintenance. I think of those type of things, but we can, we can serve him in church maintenance. We can serve him by helping with our building and grounds, uh, uh, trimming shrubs, weeding the flower beds, um, pick up trash. Uh, sometimes it's in the parking lot when we come in, just different ways that we can serve the Lord. Um, <clears throat> change the light bulbs. Uh, I'll be honest with you, um, 
Um, I'm getting older, and I hate changing the light bulbs in the, in the auditorium now. So if any of you younger guys are interested in doing that, I'll show you how to do it. Um, but but um, uh, those, are, those are things that we can do to serve the Lord. Um, you know, I, I thought about this. Uh, in our hallways, we have, we have light fixtures in the hallways, and those light fixtures seem to attract flies, don't they? We can, we can uh, get a ladder and just take the lens down and clean the, clean the flies out of those. So there's many ways that we can, the bugs out of them. Um, uh, I thought about, what about uh, walking through the auditorium after a service and just picking up maybe papers that are left over. I know our janitors do this, but maybe it's something that we could do, straighten out the hymnals. And just many ways that we can serve the Lord in, in those type of, uh, type of things. Um, we can, we can help in the nursery, and I know many of you do. Teach a Sunday school class, teach junior church, help in junior church. Music ministries, that's, that's uh, very uh, tender in my heart. Uh, I'd like to see you all in the choir, all serving in our music ministry in some way. Orchestra, um, special music, um, uh, helping with music schedules and things like that. We have people that are dedicated to doing those things and, and do a great job, but they're things that we, can ha- we could use help with. And so just all kinds of things. Uh, our school, Brother Ron spoke about our school starting here next week, and, and there's many opportunities to help with our schools, be, be an encouragement to one of our teachers. Um, I'll tell you, every one of them, I'm sure, would love if, if someone could come in and give them a, a help an hour a day or something. Um, and of course, you'd want to coordinate that with him and Ron. Don't go by what I'm telling you, but, but uh, maybe you could tutor. Um, um, just a lot of things. Maybe you can help with the lunch. I think there's a lunch sign-up sheet out, out um, on the, in the floor today. So a lot of different things. Um, soul winning. You can come to our visitation uh, and, and go out soul winning. Um, you can pray. Spend time in prayer. You know, I, 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 I think visit, visitation and soul winning, <clears throat> we, have, we have people in our church and in our community that just need somebody to stop by and say, hello, hey, we love you, we're praying for you, we're thinking about you. And so that's visitation. But then we have many in our community that are lost souls, dying and on their way to hell, and they need you and I to stop by and share the gospel with them. So there's there's just opportunity after opportunity after opportunity uh, that we can take to serve the Lord. The Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 23, and whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men. So when we serve the Lord, we should be serving him as unto him. Not to get a pat on the back. Um, not to, to make ourselves look uh, better or, or whatever it is. But we ought to serve the Lord, do it heartily as unto the Lord, not unto men. So not for the applause of men. And and you know, when we serve the Lord as unto the Lord, um, you and I can get critical sometimes because men will let us down. And so we can get critical. Maybe maybe you sing in the choir and I'm leading the choir and you you can get critical of some things that I do or I say or whatever. um, But uh, I need to do those things unto the Lord to the best of my ability. And, and that's, that's how we all ought to be. Um, so let's look at five ways we should serve when we serve. Number one, we should serve in truth. In truth. And, and what, I, what I mean in that, uh, in truth, or in a way consistent with his word, uh, Jesus came to do the will of the Father. We must do the same. So we need to serve consistent uh, with his word in a way that's consistent with his word. So serve according to the Bible. Serve right, uh, um, again, not, not unto men, not unto different things, with, with truth, with the truth of the word behind you. We can serve the Lord, and we need to serve in that way. Uh, number two, serve in love, in love. Uh, and and we should serve out of love with all your heart and with all your soul. So serve with love and serve out of love with all your heart and with all your soul. If you have your Bibles, turn quickly to Joshua chapter 22. Joshua 22. So 
So Joshua 22 in verse 5 says, But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you, to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So we're to, we're to love him. We're to serve in love. We're to serve out of love because we love others, because we love our Savior. And we're to serve with all our heart and soul. Sometimes when we're serving, we get busy, and sometimes our heart isn't into it, I don't think. But the Bible teaches us that we should serve with all of our heart and soul. And, and people will see that, and they'll recognize it. So we need to be that example. Number three, I wrote down, serve with joy and gladness. Serve with joy and gladness. And that's back in the, in the original verses that I read in, in Psalms chapter 100. And I'm just going to read verses 1 and 2 again. And it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. And so uh, we need to serve him with joy and with gladness. We need to be excited about serve, for serving him. Uh, don't, don't act like it's a chore. Don't act like it's a chore. Um, others are watching us. They're watching to see how we serve. Um, I, I think about that. And, and uh, so we ought to be excited about service. We ought to be, we have joy in our heart. Um, we ought to have the right attitudes. We ought to serve with gladness. M many times um, it should not be, oh, I got to teach Sunday school today. I got to get up and study. I got to do this. I got to do that. It ought to be, I get to. Praise the Lord that the Lord uses somebody like me to serve him, to give out the gospel, uh, to, to, to lead music, to whatever it is, whatever it is. Uh, thank the Lord that he uses you and I in different ways. And so we ought to be excited about serving. And sometimes that's hard, isn't it? Sometimes we're tired. Sometimes, sometimes we don't feel like it. But, but we ought to, uh, again, be excited and serve him with joy and with gladness. The fourth thing here that I wrote down is with determination. With determination. And in James uh, chapter 1, James chapter 1, in uh, verse 12, it says, uh, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he, is, uh, when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. So blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised uh, to them that love him. So, uh, you and I ought to endure temptation, determine to do right. You know, when, you, when we're doing right, when we're serving the Lord, do you know that uh, there will be people that criticize us, that will try to get us to stop? Uh, do you know that Satan will do that? He'll put thoughts in your mind. He'll, he'll, he'll do everything he can to discourage you and I. But we have to determine to do right. Determined to serve him, to serve the Lord, no matter what. Uh, in, in, in the Lord, we have to call on the Lord to give us strength to get us through those times when, when we're uh, maybe tempted to give up or throw in the towel or what it is. Do you know, do you know uh, they can be simple things. Maybe, maybe you came out to the church and... and Pulled the, pulled the weeds, flower beds. Maybe you trim the shrub, shrubs. Things that need to be done, don't they? To, just to keep our facility looking properly. But you know what? It takes one person to say, oh, you missed a weed. Oh, that shrub looks ridiculous. To be a discouragement to us. And many of us will say, forget it. I'm not doing it anymore. But we need the Lord's help. Uh, in and we need to be determined to go forward. That's a little thing. Th think about the things about uh, serving the Lord. You, you don't know, I've, I've been teaching our college and career class for a lot of years now, and you don't know how many Sundays I go home, and, and Satan, honestly, um, will put a thought in my mind. Man, you ought to hang it up, Dave. <laughs> 
that was terrible. They probably didn't get nothing out of that. And, and I don't know if that's true or not, but Satan would do anything he can do to discourage me from teaching. And so we need to, we need to have determination to endure those things and, and depend on the Lord to get us through them no matter what comes, no matter what's thrown at us. And, and he'll give us the strength. <clears throat> and then the fifth thing, uh, we, need to, we need to serve him with humility. With humility. In 1 Peter 5, 6, it says, Humble yourselves unto the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. When, when you and I get thinking that we just did something great, that's not humble. We're going to fall. We're going to get showed real quick that, hey, you're not what you think you are. You know, there's times, um, there's times, uh, again, I can, use, I can use the choir for an example. There's times where I've been up here leading the choir, and I, think, and I, get, and I get done leading them, I think, they nailed it. And that was good. And I could sit here and say, look what I just led. But the minute I do something like that, I'll turn around to lead you in congregational singing, and I'll fall apart. We need to all do, uh, serve the Lord with humility and understand that anything that we do Anything, God's given us the abilities to serve him. And we need to give him the honor and glory for it. Not take it upon ourselves. Praise the Lord. Again, uh, praise the Lord that he uses a sinner such as I. That he uses a sinner like you to serve him. It, it's amazing to me. And I, th and I thank the Lord that he does that. So don't, don't serve to bring attention to yourself. Um, but serve out of humil humility. Um, and remember that it's by God's grace, I am what I am, or you are what you are. It's by God's grace. And so, so we need to understand those things. <clears throat> In my, my point through all these things, and even giving a list of things, all of us, can and should be serving somewhere in the local church. We should be serving the Lord. We can start small and we can grow. Um, uh, I can remember uh, starting um, um, music when uh, Pastor Todd Harrison here is, was here with our teens and, and uh, one day he says, hey, I need someone to lead the teen choir. And um, I'm like, I, I'm telling you, I felt like an idiot standing in front of our teenagers waving my hand. What am I doing this for? Now, I probably look like one, but I'm comfortable, all right? But, um, but my point is, is we, can, we have to start somewhere. I started, I started teaching years and years ago, uh, junior high boys in Sunday school class. And I had a great time with the junior high boys, but it was a stepping stone for me. It was a stepping stone. And so we can grow by serving the Lord, through serving the Lord. Don't be afraid to start somewhere. Any of us uh, can pick up that paper in the parking lot or a candy wrapper in the hall. That's serving the Lord. Any of us can do those. So, um, so we, can, we should be serving the Lord and we should be growing in our service. The sad thing is you and I often put more in, uh, in, into our occupation and hobbies than we do serving the Lord. Listen, we heard Sunday night, those things in themselves are not wrong. We have to work, don't we? We have to make a living. Uh, we have to do those things. We have hobbies. Those things are not wrong. But, but think about it. When we put more into those things uh, than we do serving the Lord, and I would say that we, that we all do that. And so, you know, I, I got thinking about this. I got saved. So I'll just tell you, I'll be 60 this year. 
I got saved when I was six years old. So what is that? Uh, I should have figured that out, but um, 54 years uh, that I've been saved. And, and I, you know, I've been an electrician for about, I don't know, 25 years, 30 years, 30 years, I guess. How long have you been, Mary Bell? 40 years? Man. 40 years. So I've been an electrician a long time. A long time. But, but I was thinking about it. So I'm a master electrician. So the time that I put in to, uh, to get my license, first you start, you're your you're apprentice. I became a journeyman. My journeyman took me um, uh, 8,000 hours and not less than four years. In other words, I couldn't work a bunch of overtime and get my, get my journeyman's card. I had to go to, I had to take classes, I had to work, do on the job training, things like that. So 8,000 hours I had to put in to becoming a journeyman electrician in not less than four years. So then I went on to get my master's. So I'm a master electrician. I worked another 4,000 hours in not less than two years. To, to get my master's. So, so I, in my education and in my licenses that I have, I've got over six years of study, of work, of things. And I think about, about what I've learned compared to what I've learned in almost 54 years out of the, out of the word. It's sad. It's sad. Uh, and, and maybe you are that same way. In other words, all of us should be serving the Lord and doing more for the Lord and, and, and investing our time in His Word and in, in, in the work of the Lord. Um, beyond, uh, to maintain my licenses, I have to, I have to uh, complete a code update class every few years. So I have to continue my education. Part of that's because codes change. You know, we've, our, you think about it in your lifetime, what electricity was and what it is today and what the things we use it for. So codes change, things like that. Uh, one of the big things for code updates, I believe, today is, is uh, uh, companies lobbying our government to sell their product. And so they sell their product and then they make us install it and, and things like that. So, so there's a lot, lot of things that go into it. But, um, but my, my point is, in sharing that with you, I started out small. I started out as a young apprentice. I put my time in, and I, and I became a journeyman electrician, then I became a master. And my, my learning uh, never ends, because I have to continue to learn. And that ought to be the same way when, we're, when we serve the Lord. Um, start small again, work up. Uh, not just to be not just to be successful in your op, in your occupation, but be successful. Be a successful Christian. Serve the Lord with gladness. Serve Him with your heart. Um, I, I have a couple um, practical examples that I want to share with you, um, and so I I brought a couple things. So, sometimes you may say, well, Brother Dave, I can't serve the Lord. I can't witness. I can't tell somebody about the Lord. I can't, I can't lead somebody to the Lord. And you know what? Without the Lord's strength, none of us can. But again... We need to start small. Um, uh, I, 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 for an example, here, here's my pouch. All right, this is my big pouch. I hate this pouch. It's heavy. I hate carrying it around. I don't wear it as much as I used to. But, but something that that I want to share with you, um, I have a. When I'm roughing a home, I normally have this pouch on, and I always have my tape measure with me because of the type of work I'm doing. So I have the tools. One of the things that, that about my pouch, I'm not going to put it on, 
but I know where every tool is. I don't have to look down. I know my strippers are here. I know my linesman's players are right here. I know my straight blade screwdrivers right there. I know my uh, Phillips screwdrivers right beside it. I know exactly where my tools are. I know my, I know my knife is right here. And so it's things that uh, you and I can know in uh, what we have and the tools that we have and how to use those tools. Um, so uh, I, I have a little pouch. This pouch I like. Matter of fact, in a few minutes here, I'm going to put it on. But this pouch I like. You know what I use this pouch for? Uh, on, when I'm doing residential work, I use this pouch to finish a house. In other words, to go in, plug and switch, put the, put the devices in the wall. Again, uh, my strippers, because I got a strip, I got a strip wire when I do that. I have my straight blade and my Phillips. I have my spinner. This is a, this is just a wonderful thing uh, for putting on plates because you can just they're quick. But again, I know where it, every tool is, and I know what tool I need for that job. I want I want to compare that real quick to this book. It's a big book, isn't it? It's a lot of information. You and I should never stop learning out of it. Just like as long as I'm going to be an electrician, I should never stop learning about my trade. So you and I should always be learning out of this book. But, we, but sometimes we can get defeated when we look at this book, can't we? There's so much in it. I can't learn all that. I can't do all that. But you know what you can do? You can use the small tools that God's given us, like a track. You can use a small tool out of this book, like John 3.16, can't you? And you can memorize it, and you can share it with others. So, so God can use us. You know, he, he wants us to, to continue learning this book and gaining knowledge from it, but he doesn't expect us to know it all. He doesn't expect us to be able to answer everybody's questions, but he does, I believe, expect us to know how to lead someone to the Lord. I believe he expects us to put time into that book and learn it and grow. I believe that. I, I, I was, I was um, um, how, many, how many of you uh, would take, I bet you it would take, this is one of my favorite tracks, God's Simple Plan of Salvation, one of my favorite ones. There's a lot of tracks out there for different things, for sports, for different things, but this is one of my favorite ones. How many of us would take an hour or two hours to memorize the points in this track? I just told you that I took how many hours? 12,000 hours to get my master's, my master electrical license, and I did it for work. I did it to supply for my family. But many of us won't even take an hour to learn how to lead someone that's lost and dying on their way to hell. That's a way that we can serve. I, 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 I've highlighted some things in here. Um, many of these verses are familiar. But it's not just knowing the verse, it's often putting them in order too. Uh, Romans 3.23, and, and, and most of these I know in order, but I'm going to read them because I'll forget because I'm talking to you guys. But Romans 3.23, for all of sin and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. Hebrews 9.27, uh, it is appointed unto men once to die, but after that, the judgment. Simple verses that you and I can, can learn to lead somebody to Christ. But how many of us will take the time Hebrews 9.22, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Um, Romans 5.8, God commended his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And, and so just many, many more verses, John 1.12, Romans 10.13. Um, we, we need to take time to study God's word and again, we don't have to go with them starting out with this. 
I, I want to, with all of this, we need to go to them with this, don't we? Uh, we can take them just a portion. And that's what God, God expects us to do. That's a tool. This is a tool he's given us. And we need to serve him by using the tools that he's given us. Um, I want to, I, I brought a, I'm going to put something together for you real quick. I want to read my notes before I get going on it because I'm going to talk to you some while I'm doing it. So what I'm going to show you, um, this, is, this, is a, this is a small small task. Most of you probably already could do even though you're not electricians um, in it. And uh, Um, so most of you could do it probably my first week, probably before I even, even went to apprenticeship, I could, I could do something like this. But I, just, I want to quickly and, and use some tools. So I have, a, I have a light socket, a switch, a switch plate. So I'm going to start out up top with the, with the light socket, and I'm just going to put it together here. You have, you have, a, you have a hot, whoops. <clears throat> Don't do that on the job when someone's watching you. <laughs> it's embarrassing. So th this... This is a, a plastic fixture, and it has a hot and a neutral uh, that brings power up from your power supply to this, to this fixture. So I put the wires on where they belong. Get out my Phillips screwdriver because it's got Phillips head on it. Put that together. Then I need to put a switch in that gives me that helps me control the light fixture. In, this, in the switch box, I, I take my neutral, I wire my neutral through, so that, so that wire goes all the way through from my power supply up to, up to my uh, device or to my uh, uh, light, light fixture. I put, the, I put the switch in. The switch is switching your hot wire, so it's breaking your hot wire or, or making it connect. And then there's a ground wire here that I put on my ground. And something about the ground, ground is one of the most important, uh, not going to get into a lot of it, but it's one of the most important, important wires uh, that you can have. A ground is a life safety. And, and uh, so it's good for your, your uh, equipment to be grounded, just like it's good for you and I to be grounded in the Word of God. It needs to be major. It needs to be... Uh, the top thing, just like it's one of the most important things that I'm doing here right now is putting that ground wire on. So you and I need to be grounded in God's word, uh, um, and especially when we go out to serve him. And, and again, it doesn't matter what level of service. So be grounded in his word. put this together real quick then I take that uh, switch plate in my favorite little screwdriver there I put it I put it on here and it's just it's fast So the switch plate switch plates on. Just a word of warning. 
if you ever buy one of these, um, be very careful because on a finished wall in a new home, you'll slip off and you'll walk across their wall if you don't know, you don't know how to, and they're not happy when that happens. So here's a, here's a light bulb. I'm going to screw the light bulb in. Then I'm going to plug the, go ahead and plug this in. Notice I didn't have power to it while I was working on it. That's a wise thing. Then if everything works, the light comes on. And what I want, thank you. So, again, simple, simple uh, uh, illustration. But the thing that I want to, that I want to uh, bring across to there is um, the Jesus is the light of the world. And your service and my service, no matter how small or great it is, can, use, can be used to bring people to the light. I like to think of this switch as you and I, as the servant. And you and I can be used to switch the light on so that they can see the light of the world. It do, again, it doesn't matter if it's, if it's in the background, picking up a piece of paper off the ground at our church, uh, trimming the shrubs, changing a light bulb, serve the Lord. All those things brought together let us go out and reach the community for Christ, doesn't it? By you and I doing those things, our pastor can study the word and teach us rather than spend his time doing little things here around the church. So it takes every one of us to serve. And then my challenge to you is don't stop there. Don't stop with changing the light bulb. Don't stop with whatever it is that you're doing. Go on. Teach a Sunday school class. Become a deacon. Uh, go out soul winning. You want to know something? We can get joy in doing things for the Lord, and we ought to. It ought to, it ought to excite us to serve the Lord. But you want to know the most exciting thing that you can ever do to, for the Lord is win a lost soul. When the Lord gives you an opportunity to sit down with his word and show somebody how they can know, how they can know that they're on their way to heaven. And they accept Trust Christ as their Savior. What joy. What joy. You know, the, you know, the, you know the, the problem is? We don't do it enough. So we, we lose what that joy is. We, we, it's not a big deal to us anymore. So my challenge today is, is to serve the Lord. Be the switch that God can use to turn on the light. So somebody sees the light of the world and trusts him as their savior. I want to I want to end with reading the song. Started with a song, going to end with a song. The light of the world is Jesus. The whole world, the whole world was lost in the darkness of sin. The light of the world is Jesus. Like sunshine at noonday, his glory shone in. The light of the world is Jesus. No darkness have we who in Jesus abide. The light of the world is Jesus. We walk in the light when we follow our guide. The light of the world is Jesus. Ye dwellers in darkness with sin-blinded eyes. The light of the world is Jesus. That's the lost one. That's dwelling in darkness. But you and I have the answer. We can help turn that switch on so they, they can see that light. The dwellers in darkness with sin blinded eyes, the light of the world is Jesus. Go wash at his bidding and light will arise. The light of the world is Jesus. Don't think that you can't be the person 
to show them the light. God can use every one of us, and he wants to use every one of us.